What's going on guys, Vic VP back with another Game Case Arcade video. This is it, Eugene's control panel is done. I'm gonna show you guys what I did. We got the Pandora's Box 3D and we have the Raspberry Pi running in this together. Boom shakalaka! All right guys, so this is it, Eugene Money. This is gonna come to you. I got some good news and I got some bad news, but real quick for people that just tuned in, you could definitely check back on the original video, but I'm gonna tell you real quick what's going on in this control panel and why we're doing it. Let me just lower the music on this. All right guys, so again, real quick, just a backstory on this control panel. Everything is in this panel. Literally everything you see here is inside of it. What do I mean? We do have the Pandora's Box 3D. We actually have the JAMA version on this side of the control panel. And on the right side of the control panel, we do have the Raspberry Pi uh, 3B Plus. This is running 15,000 games, set to four player mod on this. And again, basically there's two systems in this one arcade control panel. Now a lot of people did comment, Vic, why does he want a Pandora's Box? Why, 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 why? I don't know why. I've never used this 3D Pandora's box before, but I will tell you that it's got its pluses and minuses. I mean, this thing does play PSP games, which blew my mind. So again, you guys let me know whatever you want and I'll put it. The real purpose of this video is to show you guys that we definitely have the controls working on both systems at the same time. You don't have to switch anything. It doesn't work that way. We're gonna do real quick, a real test of showing you guys how that's gonna work. And uh, we're gonna actually load up Street Fighter, just to see like the differences and all that. Big thing to keep in mind though is that with the Pandora's box, so there are different versions of Street Fighter. There's a lot of world types and series types, and it's kind of a headache when it comes to that. Uh, this does have like 2,300 games in it, but with the 2,300 games, there's probably, I would say a good, I don't know, maybe 15% that are duplicates. Uh, when we do look at Street Fighter, I'll take a look real quick. But even right now, as you can see, as I am going up and down, we do have both systems running nice and easy. Uh, my attract mode, yes, there is always forever. A track mode does have a slight delay. So you can literally see as I go down, you might have a little bit of a bounce to it. That's just a track mode. There is a lot of visual stuff going on with the track mode, especially with the Raspberry Pi. You are gonna get that little bit of lag, but it's only on a track mode. It doesn't affect actual gameplay because in the game, it doesn't need all this artwork going on. I'll take you guys on my hands. I'll actually show you what we did on the back of the control panel, but real quick right now, I just wanna focus on the actual systems working. No, he will never have both systems on. That's kind of stupid to have both systems on because it just doesn't make sense in that case. Um, it's really meant for like, if he wants to play the Pandora's 3D, then he'll be able to switch that one on. If he wants to play the Raspberry Pi, he'll be able to simply just push the switch that I have in the back and that's it. There's no need to swap out, you know, USB encoders. No, everything is set and working accordingly. I am in systems right now. I'm gonna load up again, regular Street Fighter. I'm gonna have this one at least loaded up first and then I will load up the Raspberry, uh, the Pandora's box but let's just go a little bit slow. I do want to do like regular, try to match it up with Street Fighter to Street Fighter. Um, so I'm gonna run Street Fighter, probably the Champion Edition. As you can see, this is kind of spazzing out, but that's okay. All right, let's do this. So we're gonna run Street Fighter 2 Champion Edition. So on my image, it's just a simple Street Fighter 2. While that's in like really um, arcade mode, meaning it's waiting for a coin, I could actually navigate this. So let's just see real quick if I could actually just look up Street Fighter. And as you can see, like I said, you could literally see that right there, but if I don't press the coin button, that's not gonna do anything. Um, so let's just see, how do I put a space? I can't put any spaces apparently. Uh, so let's just see real quick. So we have Street Fighter Alpha. We are doing Street Fighter Champion Edition. So we have one here, Street set one. And we have what? Street Fighter Champion Edition set two. So see like, there are a couple of duplicates. Um, that's just known to happen. What's the Street Fighter two Champion Edition M6. No clue what that means. Again, as you can see right now, we literally have three Street Fighter two Championship Editions. So I'm gonna stick with the basic one and let's do set one. 
and we're gonna let that load. So like I said, literally this is not moving because we didn't put a coin in. That already has a coin. It's set to just enable a coin off the bat. I'm gonna put a coin at least in for me here. Let's do two players on this if that's possible. And again, I'll show you what we're doing as far as that. Okay, so now I need my player two here. Player two is here. We're gonna do Ryu and Ken, obviously. Literally, same game, side by side. It'd be cool if it actually load up the same map. <laughs> so, we go right, we go left. As you can see, look at the speed on this one. But again, that's the ROM. This is set to like set one. Look how fast he's going. We go left and right on 10, good. Always do our button test. One, one, two, three, four, five, six. We're good. One, two, three, four, five, six. One of the main concerns that Eugene had while he was playing his Game Room Solutions version of the image is that he believed that there was like input lag. Um, you know, some people do think that if you do actually use JAMA hardware, it might be less lag. For me, I don't see any lag as far as the Pi image. I understand in the track mode, you will see the lag, but as far as in game, you really don't see it. Um, I don't want to press the wrong button. I just exited it out like an idiot. <laughs> Let me get these back on real quick. So this actually, we're gonna let this go. Let me try to get my game back, please. Okay. Let me get these players back on. And at least we got that back. <laughs> so, I mean, again, as you can see, I'm gonna let this load up. Basically, when I press the button, I mean, it is basically exactly the same. Like, literally, the timing on it is pretty good. I mean, even if you were gonna do like a Hadouken, it's just, you know, it's fine. This this version of these ROMs though, you can see the fireball is slow, um, but yet the player moves fast. Like it's kind of weird. Like I think we're like flying on this one, we're flying. So as you can see, like there's no real like input lag on it, but it works pretty good. At least, you know, you could see when you press all the buttons. That's how I always test is to make sure at least all the buttons work. And it's easy. So like I said, literally what you see right here that he could be playing one system or the other system Always use Street Fighter to test out your buttons. I always say that in all my videos. So no matter what, use your Street Fighter just to test it. So now the only issue is that we do have like three different Street Fighter Champion Edition ones. I'm gonna exit out on this one and see if we could load up the other one just to see if it does anything. Again, I don't have to worry about this one because again, like, you know, it's literally me fighting alone. But again, he will never be playing both at the same time. That is not the purpose of this build. You're not meant to play like two systems at the same time, it doesn't make sense. So some people did think that, wow, what is happening here? Use in Taiwan only, awesome. But who knows, this might be the real ROM to it, let's just see what happens. Let's see. This ROM has light to it, you could even see the bounce on that. This one though looks like Let's get the rise up. This is like the normal one, I guess you could say. I mean, the fireball is a little bit different, definitely. But I mean, again, that's the one thing that you have to keep in mind when it comes to this. But again, each system has its pluses and minuses. My big thing is at least with this, you do have the option to save the state, load the state. This one I believe does not. I will do more research on it. Oh, actually it does, look at that. Depending on the ROM, you could actually save the state interesting interesting but the rom before it didn't let me do that um i mean again that's what kind of sucks and it is using mam you could literally see like the systems it's running but the big kind of thing that's blowing my mind with this one right here is that literally this thing does have um i mean you got you got psp on this like it's it's kind of crazy we literally have like psp we even have a couple playstation games ps1 we got N64, we're gonna do it again. Like I said, I'm gonna actually plug this into the screen capture just to see it because again, some of this stuff is, is crazy. You got Famicom, you got the Super Famicom, you got Game Boy Advance, Game Boy Color, MD, I forgot what it, Mega Drive, uh, PCE, uh, Dreamcast, not too many. As far as I hope it's not looking for the words. No, it's not, this is just going through everything. And as far as arcades, you do have 69 pages of it. Let's see what it comes out to. You got 2134. I mean, that's a lot. It's a lot of arcade games on that, can't lie. 
But as you can see, I'm getting my butt kicked right here. <laughs> Again, as you saw in the other video, we did have an issue that I thought had an issue with the Pandora's uh, 3D. Apparently we had the wrong power supply. So be sure next time, I mean, for me, I'll make a mental note to make sure that we do get the right power supply. I'll put it down below if you need it. Uh, it was a 12 volt, uh, like four amp or three amp. I was running a five amp through it and basically it just wouldn't work. So, um, like I said, I'm gonna do an actual screen capture with the Pandora's 3D, but the main objective for this was for you to at least see the actual systems working together. I'm not gonna make a comparison video to this, to the Pi. I mean, it's kind of basic stuff. I made a video about maybe a year and a half ago to two years ago discussing the differences. But real quick, as you can see, like a track mode on this, nothing's moving. It keeps replaying the same like 10 second video, whereas our Raspberry Pi, we actually have a nicer a track mode. Again, two totally different systems, just so you could see it, at least it plays pretty good. And again, the biggest shocker to this is literally, I mean, you're talking PSP, we're talking like pretty intense um, games. Uh, I'll probably load up um, a couple of games that like on the N64 compared to this, just so you could see it. But real quick, let's take a look at the control panel itself, as far as what I did and why I did it and all that. So on the back of this, you're gonna notice a couple of things. Unfortunately, I have these four screws here. What happened during transit or even Eugene told me that before, even while he was playing it, the hinges that hold the control panel up, um, one of them actually like ripped out entirely. Like the actual piece of wood uh, was ripped out entirely. So basically to make sure it doesn't move again, we actually I actually put nuts and bolts into it. So this definitely will not pop out. Yes, you do have a little bit of an ugly kind of, you know, washer thing going on, but at least I know 100% that's not coming out. But the main thing that we did add are the individual power buttons for each individual system. Each side also he did get, I'm, we did buy another set of HDMI and USB extenders. So this side right here is for the Pi. I basically set it up for red, like retro pie red, like the apple is red. It's got the red switch for the Raspberry Pi and then blue for basically Pandora's box. So left side is Pandora's box, right side is the Raspberry Pi. With that though, we do have the HDMI going to the Pi. We have the HDMI going to the Pandora's box. So it's got its own HDMI and the USB connection to it. This way, in all honesty, if he wanted to switch between systems, all he would do is that he would pull out the HDMI from one system and plug in the other one. You could avoid that by doing a kind of box here to switch. I mean, that's 20 bucks for what? Don't be too lazy. Pull it out, put it back in. This is just like normal stuff from Gaming Solutions. You have your main switch, so this will power on everything. Basically, if I do have this, and also just a quick note as far as this switch, this is an actual PC switch, like it's for a computer. And what I noticed that you do need a um, actual switch, not momentary, you actually need like a latch switch. So this right now, some people are gonna argue with me. Yes, I will be able to spin it a little bit and adjust it. But basically this right now is unlatched for power on. If I push this in, it's latched. Pandora's box turned off, it's latched. The one thing I noticed about these Amazon switches is that they're very delicate. So even with the lightest of movement, this actually gets unlatched. Um, I basically flipped it. Really, when you latch it, it should be powered on. I did it where when you unlatch it, it powers on. As you can see right here, we have it unlatched. That means that the Raspberry Pi is on. My Pandora's box, LED is off. I have that set up perfectly for that. So LED off means that the system is off. If he wants to play it, you just unlatch. LED turns on, and now the Pandora's box will turn on. That's it, done. So he could literally power on and off each individual system. While that kind of plays around and everything, be sure, remember, I do have up here, which I, I couldn't believe this. Um, listen, everybody has their own way of wiring. Game Room Solutions has these two buttons wired to player one side of the Zinmo, and then these two buttons wired to player two side uh, Zinmo. I mean, that was just god awful. I, I, it, I wasn't gonna rewire it. I don't know why he did that. I usually do all these on player one. 
So our kind of load state and save state is a little bit different for you, Eugene, only because I didn't want to play around with these. And then if you wanted to use his image, I didn't want to touch it too much. So my mode is basically our hotkey. So hotkey exit, that's, that's normal. So if you did want to exit out, that will work like normal. Let's load back in. Basically what I did now, as you can see, it is loading up. I have for you now, buddy, again, mode is always your hotkey. So I have the coin, let's see, coin is set to load and start is set to save. So if you did want to do a save state, right now I save something. So if I do hotkey coin, it will load that save state. If I do hotkey start, it will save the state. So unfortunately, whatever way he wired it, I usually have this set as one. Basically the, basically the Raspberry Pi does not notice this as player one inputs, which it should be, um, but whatever, at least we got it to work. I somehow loaded up Tekken 6, but that's okay. <laughs> so again, as far as the actual physical control panel, we have that, and we also added the two real arcade latches right here because he did have an issue with the control panel lifting. So basically, as you can see, give it a little bit of pressure, and it does, like, it's pretty perfect. There's no wires being crushed. So this right here, you take it, we put it in, and then we latch it down. That's in, you take this one here, and I actually had to modify these. I had to actually cut these. They were too long. Again, these are meant for a real arcade. So this right here, it goes down. My piece of wood is a little bit in the way. My uh, table's not even, but there you go. Now that is latched and it's not going anywhere. As you can see, I'm literally putting pressure. I'm literally trying to lift it. It's not going anywhere. So Eugene did have a very unique request with that and we made it work. I mean, listen, it looks pretty cool. It actually looks like a real arcade control panel because it is an arcade control panel. Now he doesn't have to worry about any wires moving, which is a great thing because I'm going to flip open the top and you're going to see how we ran the wires because honestly, I'm even shocked about how I did it. And luckily it came out perfect. Unlatch the latches. And there we have it. Our wiring mess. <laughs> I wish, I wish I could make this like perfectly clean. It's just... You know, I was more shocked that these two buttons here are wired to player two. Uh, but again, we're not focusing on that. We do have our Pandora's box on the left and we have our Raspberry Pi on the right. These do have fans, like they literally are fans spinning. And luckily, the way we I had to do it was to make sure that that fan does not get touched. So as you can see, that is really the reason why we had a D case. As far as my right side, that is why we have to put the Pi on that side. And as you can see, we literally clear it, everything. This is like perfect to the max. Again, I just had to do a couple of staples, but at least our painter's tape is holding it well, but we're gonna clean that up accordingly. Down the center, we do have all the power here. And as you can see, you can literally see kind of the little indent that it makes because it fits perfectly here. I mean, you literally have these two here. This power supply is to the Pandora's box. This power supply is big, it's pretty tall. I tried putting it here, didn't work, wouldn't close, and I was actually crushing one of the buttons. So we basically got a little extender, put it sideways, and it was good to go. I did wanna use one of these, like a power brick. This fit perfectly inside, but it just, that was not the right power supply and all that. So this, luckily, exactly how this is, it is perfect. The USB um, extenders and HDMI has like a six foot wire. You can't cut that. So basically I coiled it up and then we put it in its right spot. Same thing for the Pandora's box. We basically coiled it up and put it in its right spot. The Pandora's box with the JAMA harness here, we actually are using the physical wire to power the Pandora's box. This does have its own power input right here. I could not use that because we have the switches. For you to use the switch, you cannot use this. You probably can, but then you have to splice into the actual like power cord. I didn't want to deal with that only because if he ever needs to swap out the power cord, all he literally has to do is just pull this pigtail out and swap it out. This right now, basically before we ship, we're gonna put some padding down to make sure nothing moves in transit. But in all honesty, this thing is pretty locked and secured in. I'm not worried about anything moving in transit. I will probably put something here to make sure the Pandora's box doesn't move, which it won't. 
because in all honesty, we do have a three point screw in, so this is not going anywhere. My only worry though is with this Raspberry Pi. The Raspberry Pi came and he bought like this heat sink special. It is down. It is kind of flimsy though, like the double sided stuff that it came with. I'm gonna probably put like at least a good foam block on that to make sure it doesn't move. Inside here, we do have the original uh, Game Room Solutions SD card. In the last video, I actually moved up the Pi. This way now you could easily get into it and swap out the SD card without any worry. Big thing, keep in mind, anybody that buys my image, you never want, as far as me, what I learned, you never want to just pull the plug on the Raspberry Pi. You do definitely want to quit, exit a track mode. So you press back, you press back, press back again, and then enter on yes, and it'll basically bring up a cherry, and you're good to turn it off. As far as button navigation for the Raspberry Pi, uh, basic setup, we have our enter and our back. And on these, I always do our letter. So you could always find the game faster. So for example, I will go into arcade. Also, I do have this set. Um, can I press play on this? Yes, I could press play on this. So play could be entered just like how Game Room Solutions is. Exit can bring it back. Either one will work. So you could do the top ones or this one. Basically again, for our letter skips, if I wanted to, let's say, play uh, The Simpsons, we right now are under Street Fighter. I'm gonna keep pressing down, that's the next letter. And basically TB, TC, again, with Game Room Solutions image, it was not in alphabetical order. I wanted to play some Metal Slug and I couldn't find it. Basically now I found The Simpsons and we enter. It's a perfect segue because now I could introduce to you the Xbox One controller. Uh, we do have an Xbox One controller working on this. Eugene does have a unique request on that. I've done it mostly with the uh, PlayStation 3 controllers. This Xbox controller, buddy, I'm not going to lie to you, biggest pain in the ass. Uh, I actually have this set to Bluetooth mode. He did give me the dongle. He actually gave me the dongle for it, for the Xbox, uh, for the, like, you know, for you to put the USB in didn't work uh, on either the Raspberry Pi is underpowered or somebody said that this is not kind of configured for Linux so it didn't work but the Raspberry Pi does have Bluetooth built into it and the Xbox controller is Bluetooth um, here's the downside you can only use one Xbox controller at a time I am able to get both Xbox controllers connected but once you get into a game, that is it. The system freezes, you can't do anything. Not even the arcade sticks work. You would have to shut off the system, reboot, and basically I was not able to get four players to work on this. All right guys, so real quick update. The Xbox One controllers were just not doing it. I tried and I tried and it kept, it was kicking my butt. So I contacted Eugene and basically we got him two PlayStation 3 controllers. I always use these controllers and I know there's no issues. The Xbox One would have been amazing, but I got it to work and then once you add the second Xbox One controller, it would lock up. It was kind of chaotic and I said, you know what? If I have a headache with it, imagine you, the customer, having a headache with it. So we scrapped the whole idea. The Xbox One controllers will go with the PC build though, so they're not useless. Um, but real quick, let's just take a look at the PlayStation controllers. Um, play, player 3, this is always going to go to Player 3 because the Zimmos are always connected, so you could use the PlayStation controller to navigate if you want, or you could still use the um, arcade sticks to go up and down. So let's load up real quick The Simpsons. I always do The Simpsons game. I don't know why. It's just so easy to load up a four-player game. So um, you do have a lot of four-player games. I would say about this, about 35 to 40 games. Um, on the PlayStation controller, L1 is to go back on the letter, so previous letter and R1 is the next letter, so you can navigate the attract mode screen with it. Same thing, we got player one, is Marge, player two, my, my PlayStation 3 controller has a light on it, this is player three, and player four. Boom. I'm gonna press start on all these. It's always gonna work. Once you get like this and you actually have to coin in, it's easy. On the PlayStation controller, your select button is your coin. So, again, we're moving. And this with the double team, good stuff. So as you can see, 
we're moving around. That is it. Exit out, mode, exit, and we're out. Right, so real quick for you, Eugene, this one's specific. Eugene, you do want it where basically some games that you don't like using the arcade control panel, you want to use the, the PlayStation controller. Let's load up this Pac-Man real quick. This does get a little like tedious. It is a little bit difficult, but um, you know, this is like expert level stuff. Um, follow this step-by-step -step thing. It's pretty easy. It's not that drastic. It's just, you know, this is what the system does. The only real way to avoid this is for you to open up the control panel and disconnect the Zinmo, which I really don't want you to do that because you're going in and out and we're gonna get wires loose. I'd rather you not do that. So no matter what you do, this is always player one. When you load up a game, this is always player one. That's it. So the big thing that we have to do is that we have to go into retro arc menu from here. Let me bring you in closer just so you can see the buttons I'm pressing real quick. Okay, so real quick again, we right now have the arcade stick working on this, but you don't want that. You want to use the PlayStation controller. So here's what happens. If you do want to switch up the controllers, you basically hold down mode and you press button two. That's going to bring up this menu here. You can definitely see it. Okay, so again, usually I just want to make sure you can see it. So you're going to always get this kind of screen. The first thing you see is resume. So we don't really want that. We're going to press button five to bring it back to here. We're gonna go on the joystick. The joystick is still the master setup right now. We're gonna to go to settings, button four. We're gonna to go to input, button four. Button four basically is our enter. We're gonna go into user one binding. So that's the, this is to change player one, button four. The big thing here, this is where it gets kind of chaotic, but it's not too crazy. You're gonna go into device index. And as you can see right now, this does say, and you're gonna let it kind of slide because the title's big. It says Zinmo controller number one. If you go left, you're not screwed. You need a keyboard to bring it back because it goes to disable. So don't go left. If you go right one time, it goes into player two. As of right now, as you can see, I can't do anything because we now set player one to player two joystick. We want the PlayStation controller. So you have to go now to player two joystick and as you can see right now, I didn't touch anything. It's still under number two. We're gonna go right one more time. And now we are using the PlayStation controller. This is the only kind of stupid thing now. We want to exit. Um, you could press circle. That brings you back to here. To exit out of the menu, you hold R2 and you press triangle. R2 and triangle will bring you to here and now, we are able to use the PlayStation controller accordingly. Select is coin and start is start. So now as you can see, I'd rather you use the D-pad for a game like Miss Pac-Man. I mean, the analog stick works, but in all honesty, using the analog stick on this is the same as using the arcade sticks. It's an eight way, so this is really four way if you think about it. Now, the thing is that if you want to exit, you hold down R2 and L2, and you exit. So R2 and L2 will bring it back. The cool thing about this now though, is that we didn't save the setting. So if you go now, we could either use the player three, PlayStation controller or player one. It didn't save the setting. So now if you do reload Miss Pac-Man, it basically is gonna load up as player one on the joysticks. And I wanna show you that real quick, cause we didn't save it. See, now we're back to regular arcade stuff. This doesn't work. So this right now is not usable. Like it's not being recognized because it's not player one. So again, mode, second button, you go back, you go into settings, you go into input, you go into user one, and then the Zen mode, you gotta go right. I'm on player two, go right. Now I'm on the PlayStation 3 controller, R2, triangle, and now I am able to use uh, or a PlayStation controller. Not too bad, right? So now real quick again, this works all across the board. Um, basically again, I'm gonna load up Super Nintendo. We want to play some Super Mario 3, for example. So again, this is using the arcade sticks, but you don't want to use the arcade sticks because let's say you want to lounge back on the couch and all that. Again, we are using the arcade stick. And as you can see right now, I can't get this to work because it's still player three. Again, mode, second button. We get our resume screen, we go back. We're gonna go into settings, we're gonna go enter, input, enter, we're gonna go to the player one, user one. We're gonna go 
Again, number one, we're gonna go right. It's now number two, we're gonna go right. And now I am on my PlayStation controller, R2 and triangle, I'm holding down R2. And now I'm able to enjoy how this was really meant to be played with a controller. Again, we're not exiting. Uh, we're not saving while we exit. So when you do go back, you could keep playing. So as you can see right now, again, literally playing some Super Mario. Let's see how we could run. So we got squares to run, X's to jump. I'm almost gonna eat. <laughs> and again, this is what you want, buddy. I gotcha. Same thing, R2 and L2 to exit. Boom. All right, but so real quick, the last thing I wanna show you is because you still wanna use the save and load feature, obviously, while you're playing. So what we're gonna do right now is let's go into a little bit of a game. Again, R2 is gonna be our hotkey. R2 and triangle brings up our menu, but we don't need to do that for the save. I'm just gonna repeat myself because that's the best way to learn it. Um, so real quick, again, we're gonna get out of this menu. So R2 and triangle, and we're good, right? So right now, if I wanted to save R2 and R1, you're gonna literally see here, it says saving the state. So if I go anywhere and I wanna load back that state, R2 and L1. L1 load, R1 save. So L to L, load L1. L to L, load L1. And that's the best way. So now, literally again, same thing. If I wanna exit, you do R2 and L2, and then you're back. I could go back into the game, but again, when you get back into the game, this is still set as player one for the arcade control panel. I'd rather keep it that way, buddy. This way, you know, you do a little bit of a step, but that's fine. Even on this, if you wanted to load up where you were before, mode and coin brings you back. So no matter what controller you're using, it's still the same game. It will literally, literally still let you do it. So again, I wanna use the PlayStation controller, mode, button two on the arcade stick. This menu we don't like, we're gonna go back we like this menu when it starts to quick menu, main menu, settings, enter, input, enter. And again, you're gonna get so used to it, it's just gonna be so fast, trust me. Again, device index, right, we're on number two, right, we're on the PlayStation. Once you're on the PlayStation, that's it, you're set. R2, triangle, we could play. And basically, if I do R2 and L1, we have our load and save state. So that is it. Literally most of the systems will work exactly like that. And we could just play. So this right here, you gotta press the start button to get into it. That's just how Super Nintendo was. If you wanna exit again, R2 and R2 together, boom, that's it. Just real quick, the last thing I wanna load up is Super Mario 64, amazing game. But again, you do need the PlayStation controller for that. Just to show you real quick, again, L1 is to bring the letter back. So I'm under T. We need to go to super, so now I'm under S, I could go up and I could press enter. But same thing again, when you load up a game, it is still thinking the arcade stick is player one. So again, we should be able to go into mode, button two, and switch out the system, hopefully. All right, so we're gonna load up Super Mario 64. As this game, definitely you need the PlayStation 3 controller to play this game. You cannot play this game with the arcade stick, so. Just want to show you real quick, I cut because I had to like load a save point because the intro to Super Mario is very long. So again, it is using the arcade sticks right now. Same thing. Mode button two. We're in quick menu, we bring it back to the main menu. Good. Settings, button four. Input, button four. We're gonna to go to user one binds, button four. We're gonna go to device index, right one time I'm here, right another time I'm on the PlayStation controller. Now that we're on the PlayStation controller, we can now exit out. So R2 and triangle, and I did save a state, so I'm gonna load, so R2 and L1, and now I'm in the right game. So this again, right here, this is how Mario was meant to be played. I mean, no matter what, see that? Even the C stick, the C buttons on this, they're on the right stick. So this again, right here, that's how you play Mario 64. Same thing if you did want to exit R2 and L2, and we'll be out, that's it. That is it, Eugene, we've reviewed everything for you, buddy. This is going out tomorrow. Gotta get this to you, and on the next video, we are unboxing 
the 40 terabyte setup that you got, buddy. One last thing, bud, we're, I'm gonna ship this out to you. When you do get it, unlatch the latches, lift up, and basically just remove the bubble wrap from the inside. There's three little pieces, so two big ones and one like mini one because the PCB is a little bit deeper and narrower. But this right now is awesome and it's set. And again, all you gotta do is open up the latch, lift up, pull out, and then that's it. Real quick to show you on the back, if I can with my rig. On the back, I do have two um, USB wires coming out. These are for the PlayStation 3 controllers so you could recharge them. So they are in the back. I'm gonna tape them right against the wall so they don't move.